So we're going to go into the abdomen, special views. So upright abdomen, patient position, it's upright with the anterior surface in contact with the vertical grid. Weight equally distributed in both feet. MSP center to the grid and the IR center two inches above the iliac crest. This is done to include the diaphragm. <clears throat> so I included this uh, slide in here. So you can see that it's approximately two inches above the crest. Also rule of thumb two, it's right. The film, the top of the film is right about at the level of the armpit. So that's a quick way to do it also. <clears throat> And here's the criteria, diaphragm included, unless PA chest is taken, that's usually done on a three-way abdomen. It's a PA chest, a supine KUB that includes the symphysis pubis. And then the upright abdomen, you know, you're not so concerned about the synthesis. You want to make sure that you include the diaphragm on the upright. <clears throat> so no rotation, no motion. So the CR is perpendicular to the IR enters patient on the MSP at the level two inches above the iliac crest, 14 by 17, and smaller patients, column eight to one out, inch outside the skin shadow. So the other view is your left lateral, is your AP abdomen and left lateral decubitus. This is done in place of an upright abdomen for patients who aren't able to stand. The patient position, recumbent left lateral on a radiolucent pad, arms above the level of the diaphragm, knees flex lightly, and center the iliac crest to the IR two inches above if the diaphragm is to be demonstrated. Vertical grid center to align long axis of the IR with the MSP. The center is horizontal and perpendicular to the center of the IR. And smaller patients, once again, call me to one out inch outside the skin line. The lateral abdomen, patient position, recumbent, right or left lateral, flex knee to increase stability and comfort, flex elbows and place hands under the head, IR centered at the level of the iliac crest or two inches above if the diaphragm is to be included. The centroid is perpendicular to the IR, enters on mid-coronal plane at the level of the crest or two inches above the crest if the diaphragm is included. And column eight, smaller patients, one inch outside the skin shadow. So I include this slide here on the left lateral of the cube. <clears throat> so you can see that it's slightly two inches above the level of the iliac crest. So you can see they have a right marker, meaning the left side it's down, and the right marker on the upside. And that is what it looks like. Diaphragms demonstrated here. Both sides of the body included, no rotation, no motion, and make sure you have the correct exposure factors. Lateral dorsal decubitus, patient position, supine on cart with left to right side in contact with a vertical grid, arms crossed on upper chest or behind the head, support knees for comfort, center two inches above the iliac crest to the IR. Height, adjust height on vertical grid, device to align long axis of the IR with the MCP horizontal and perpendicular to center of the IR. And then the enters the MCP at two inches above the iliac crest. And same thing, 14 by 17. And column eight to one inch outside the skin line for smaller patients. <clears throat> so which of the following might be used to demonstrate a pneumoperitoneum? And the answer is D, all of the above. 
to include the diaphragm in the upright position, AP projection of the abdomen central ray is centered to, and that is A, two inches above the iliac crest. So go into image evaluations of the abdomen. Central projections. AP abdomen, supine evidence of proper collimation, area from the pubic symphysis to the upper abdomen. Two images may be used if the patient is tall or wide. So you could do two crosswise or the T that we've talked about. And proper patient alignment is ensured by the following. Center the vertebral column, ribs, pelvis, and hips, equidistance to the edge of the image or collimated borders on both sides. No rotation of the patient is demonstrated by the following. Spinous processes in the center of the lumbar vertebrae. Ischial spines of the pelvic symmetric and visible ala or wings of the ilia symmetric. <clears throat> Continue with the AP, soft tissue brightness and contrast showing the following lateral abdominal wall and peritoneal fat layer. This is a flank stripe. So as muscles, lower border of the liver and kidneys, inferior ribs, transverse processes of the lumbar vertebrae, and right or left markers visible but not lying over abdominal contents. So there's the AP abdomen. So it looks like adequate, has a synthesis pubis, um, only thing is no marker. AP upright, evidence of proper collimation, same, same criteria the supine position as well as the diaphragm seen without motion, so two inches above the iliac crest. Brightness and contrast on upright similar to the supine, marker indicating upright position. So it has arrows indicating upright, but once again, there's no right or left marker. Value criteria are same for the upright AP projections. AP abdomen, left lateral to cube, evidence of proper collimation, diaphragm without motion, both sides of the abdomen if abdomen is too wide. Side down when fluid is suspected. Ensure the entire dependent side is included in the collimated field. So best thing is to make sure that they're on some type of um, pad so that you can see the downside because you're looking at fluid levels. And then the side up when free air is, is suspected. So make sure you know the differences. The side down when fluid is suspected and then the side up when free air is suspected. Abdominal wall, flank structures, and diaphragm. So number of patient of the patient as demonstrated by the following. Spinous process in the center of the lumbar vertebrae. Ischial spines of the pelvic symmetric and visible. All over wings of the ilia symmetric. Appropriate brightness and contrast to demonstrate abdominal contents. Proper identification visible including patient side and marking to indicate which side is up. So you can see here, have the right marker with the arrow indicating that the right side is up. Spine is aligned. And then your pelvic. So that's most difficult on the decubitus is making sure that the patient is straight and not rotated. If it's in proper collimation for the lateral abdomen, evidence of proper collimation, appropriate brightness and contrast to demonstrate abdominal contents. No rotation of the patient, demonstrated by the following. Superimposed ilia, superimposed lumbar vertebrae pedicles, and open vertebral foramina. As much of the remaining abdomen as possible in the diaphragm is included. So the image is a little bit dark, but you can see this is what the lateral abdomen. So lateral abdomen, dorsal decubitus, evidence of proper collimation, diaphragm without motion, appropriate brightness and contrast to demonstrate abdominal contents, patient elevated so that the entire abdomen is shown. So you just want to make sure that you do have a pad underneath here.
Otherwise, you're going to be cutting off this portion here. So the patient's laying down with the left marker with the arrow up. <clears throat> so we look at some images. So the projection and position, it's an AP left lateral decubitus. That's the left side down, right side up with the marker indicating the upside. So the answer here is A, lateral dorsal decubitus. So they're laying with the left side up against the IR with the arrow indicated. And this one here was the AP supine upright as indicated with the arrows. What position is this? This is the A, AP supine position. And our last slide. So the answer here is B, the lateral, right lateral. See the right side would be against the IR with the right marker. And that concludes the special views of the abdomen. Thank you.